Okay, so the other day at Canton, I was able to pick up this nice little military radio. As you can see, it's an Army radio from the Signal Corps around the 40s era, so it'd be 1945, 1943 maybe when this was made, maybe a little later. And as you can see, it's pretty well constructed. It's, it's very heavy, I'll admit that. And it's a, a transmitter receiver radio. And um, I'm going to be making a multiple part video showing how I restore this radio, hopefully to working condition. I'm sure it'll work. I mean, it's only eh, 60 years old. I'm sure it'll work. And um, if you see here, there's a plate that says receiver transmitter, BC1335. So what I'm going to be doing is attempting to replace the components in here necessary to get the radio working, and we'll see if she works. Okay, so we first noticed when we are looking at the front panel is that we have these jacks here. Well, right here is our microphone jack. As you can see, it appears to be a quarter inch jack, except it's been reduced. It's smaller. And then we have our phone output right here, which are quarter inch jacks. And fortunately for me, I do have a fitting that we can wire into here. It's uh, very similar to the fitting I have on this phone here. It's just a bit smaller. So, we'll definitely be getting this output working. It's all wired up correctly, I'm sure. Down here we have our channel selector switch right here. And we have a volume knob right here. So this radio is very simple to operate. This is volume and power. And we have a, a plug here. You can unscrew it and it has a pin sleeve connector in there. Oh, this thing gets all bunched up. Pardon me. Alright. Ah. And so you can see we have a three pin connector here. And we have the option to choose whether the radio runs on 6 volts or 12 volts. So we'll definitely be running it on 12 since I don't have a large enough 6 volt battery to run this. Since it is a tube radio, it would require a large battery to operate. Uh, I assume it could have come off of an army jeep, but then again, jeeps are 24 volts and this thing's either 6 or 12. So that's going to be a challenge we're going to have to work out. And uh, let's pop the cover off and see what's inside. Okay, as you can see, we're back, and I have the cover off of the radio. And oh my goodness, there are a bunch of tubes in here. It looks like 10 or 20 tubes inside this radio. And of course, they're little small tubes, nothing too serious. However, I've noticed a few problems upon first inspection. I've noticed that right here, this appears to be a VR-90. Those are usually power tubes, or voltage regulator tubes, and it's missing. So we're going to have to uh, acquire one of those. And of course this is, it looks like, our output right there. As you can see there's a big uh, porcelain insulator there. That's probably our RF out. And I'm going to have to find out how to hook an antenna into here. I'm not sure what length the antenna should be, or the gauge of cable or anything, or throw it up in a tree. I'm not sure what to do with this yet. But we'll figure it out. And upon closer inspection, I noticed that there are spare fuses, but there are no spare tubes. This is a rack here. You unscrew that wing nut, it flips up, and it's got a place you can store about six tubes in here should these go bad, because this may have been on a vehicle bouncing around and just things short out. So you want spare tubes. I've also noticed it has a prod here, and in the instructions it says you can use this to stick in multiple sockets on here to make the radio perform different functions. So we'll definitely be using that. And of course we have our frequency selectors here. We can change and adjust the frequency depending on what we need to do uh, nowadays. And um, one more thing I noticed in the corner. You can't really see it. I beg your pardon. This camera. Okay, there's a 6AF6G tube socket. Yeah. Now usually anything with 6AF6, depending on the model, doesn't matter if it's G or whatever, is a... Uh, one of those little indicator tubes, a little green thing. It'll uh, help you indicate if the radio is tuned properly. So we'll definitely have to order one of those or find one laying around one or the other. And it almost looks like there are light bulbs in here. That to me looks like an incandescent lamp. I don't know why that would be in there unless it's particularly a voltage regulator. Hopefully there's some ham radio people watching this can help me identify some of these components. There's also a little light in there indicator so you can select uh, the frequency or something like that. So, that's that. And one more thing, I also noticed that we are missing a crystal. Right there is our crystal socket, and we have no crystal, so we can't oscillate our radio waves yet without a crystal. And there's also a spare crystal holder in here, up under the fuse holder, so we'll have 
spare crystals there and as you can see we can place them in here as well and this very handy we have our electrical schematic that'll help us identify components and pick out what parts we need we also have a parts list everything's labeled VR90 and 6AF6G is power indicator tube and we'll get those in then we also have operating instructions so we can flip this down flip that down oops hang on this is being picky no. okay got it open now and as you can see we have step-by-step -step instructions about operating this radio of course I'm sure you have to have ham license to operate it because of the specific frequencies this thing will be outputting it's probably military but it, of course that depends on the crystal we have which we don't have currently but we will as you can see here's the electrical schematic it looks pretty complex but not too hard to figure out and as you can see we have a list of parts down here if it'll focus sorry about the glare they've coated this with some protective coating and it really does glare bad and of course spare crystals so our next spot will be to get tubes for the radio so next video I make we'll be getting tubes for this radio and replacing those so be sure and stay tuned for part two of this video and hopefully you'll like and subscribe if you want to see more of this radio and of other equipment such as uh, radio equipment and military. So we'll be getting a lot more into this here shortly. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you later.